Now that we've completed bonding, I want to take a look at the trend in the melting points across the period three elements. This is an idea we came across earlier in unit number three on periodicity. Here I presented their melting points. We can see quite a wide variation. Let's begin with the first three. The first three elements are all metallic in nature, and as a result, they bond using the metallic bond. You might recall some of the factors that affect the metallic bond involve the number of valence electrons, the cation charge, and the radius. In fact, as we move from sodium across to aluminum, we get an enhancement of the metallic bond. That's because there are both more valence electrons and greater charges in the cation. And not to mention, our ions also get a little bit smaller. When we move on to silicon, though, we're now moving into the metalloids, and it bonds differently. Silicon behaves in much the same fashion as carbon because they're in the same family. You might recall carbon makes, in a diamond at least arrangement, a giant network covalent solid. Silicon will much do the same thing, with covalent bonds located at all of the locations. This causes the giant increase that we see in the melting points. Now as we move beyond, we move into the nonmetals. And the first thing we notice here is that these tend to be much lower. The reason why is they're all governed by the London force. And you might recall that London force is one of our weak intermolecular forces. The temperatures that are shown here in red indicate that they're actually negative. Let's start off by examining chlorine. Chlorine bonded to chlorine is a nonpolar situation. As a result, it is capable of bonding with another chlorine by only the London force. You might recall that the London force also depends on the size of our particular molecule. If we moved next to argon, argon bonded to a second argon, that's a smaller situation. As a result, a much weaker London force. And we can see that by its much lower temperature at which it melts. I should mention at this point that argon really can't be considered a molecule because it's simply monoatomic, one atom. Now, as we take a look at phosphorus and sulfur, these two bond in odd arrangements. Now, we haven't seen these before, but phosphorus tends to make a tetrahedral arrangement with three other phosphorus atoms. And sulfur, on the other hand, makes a ring of eight, carbon, of eight um, sulfur atoms. We can see here that the largest of these molecules, and hence the greatest surface area and chance to make the London force, exists with sulfur. As a result, it tends to have the highest melting point of those in this region. Argon, on the other hand, being the smallest, has the lowest. So I hope you found that useful. It does review some of our different types of bonding. Questions are always welcome. Thanks for watching.